actually wouldn't agree, right? That um, that Israel is a democracy because I think a very basic condition of, of counting as a democracy, right, is that the you know the people that are that live within the borders of your state get to um, you know get the get democratic rights. They get to vote in your elections, etc. And uh, it has been the case for the last fifty six years that uh, there are literally millions of people who uh, live within Israel's borders who again if you're if you who do not have those rights that if you have that if you are um, again if if you are an Israeli who lives in a Jewish settlement in uh, in the West Bank then uh, which by the way is about depending on which numbers you're looking at is something like five to ten percent right now of uh, the overall Israeli Jewish population but if the um, but uh, if you are one of those people, you are considered for every legal purpose to live in Israel, right? You are treated as somebody who is a, you know, a resident of Israel, not as somebody who's abroad. Uh, whereas if you are in the same city down the road from a settlement, again, you can't, you can't vote in elections. Uh, if you're accused of a crime, you don't get a real trial. You get a, you know, you get a military trial. Uh, and this has been the case for 56 years. It is the, uh, it is the stated position of Israel's current government, that it will always be the case that there uh, that there could never ever be a uh, a separate Palestinian state, and you know, and this is so. It seems to me that if the within the sort of borders of that state as it currently exists, you have millions and millions of people who uh, who don't have a right to vote, then that's not a democracy. And and I think that like, and this is, and this is like really like, I think could get to like one of the really core disagreements, because I think if you say that, um, you know, like whatever historical story that you want, you know, that you would endorse about, um, you know, about what, you know, what happened at Camp David or, you know, what happened, you know, with uh, in, you know, with at Taba or et cetera. Right. Uh, what I would just say is, let's say, for the sake of argument, right, that you could uh, that Israel's governments were completely blameless in, and I know that's not even what you. Think, I don't. Right? I don't. Think so. You know, no. but like, but I'm 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 making a very specific point here, right? You know, so it's like I know this goes way beyond what you think, but if you think, for the sake of argument, that Israel's governments were, you know, completely serious. Uh, we're completely blameless, right? About uh, about the uh, the lack of a two state, you know, solution over the decades. That it was, you know, 100 percent the fault of you know Yasser Arafat and his successors and various other people. Even if you think that, right? Say, so, okay, well, look, one, uh, I don't think that justifies, um, you know, not you know withdrawing from these territories, uh, you know, even unilaterally in that case, or two. I think that if for some reason a two-state solution is impossible, like let's just say it's impossible, if it was impossible, that if there was nothing that Israel could have done, that, you know, because the, the, you know, too many just Palestinians just being too intransigent, even if you accept that, which I mean, as you would imagine, is about the furthest thing from what I actually do think about that history. We always <laughs> talk about it, right? But even if you accept that, right, I would say, okay, well, if you can't have a two-state partition, then that doesn't mean that you're justified in continuing to rule over people for decades without giving them equal rights. I think if it's the case that you can't get, do a, a two-state partition, then you would have no choice if you want to be a democracy other than to extend the vote to all those millions of people. So first of all, I am 100% for a two-state solution, which and, and that's why I'm so frustrated that the Palestinians have rejected their own state mm. after for turn after turn after turn. I feel like we're, man, we need to schedule like a four hour discussion on Israel, Palestine. Cause I feel like we keep, I, I keep wanting to go down these roads and then you talk and I want to go down a different roads. So just a couple of, of things. Sure. Um, my understanding of um, the Israeli law around how uh, my understanding of Israel mm -hmm. itself is there are no laws or policies that treat different races inside Israel any differently. And that most of the different treatment comes through their immigration policy, which, you know, countries have their, their own right to set who gets in and gets out. Right. Uh, you know, um, you know, the nation state law creates no legal distinctions between citizens, as I understand it. And I think it's really important to like contrast this with Gaza where there are just no Jews at all. 
So, you know, I, 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 I really want to be honest to say I'm not really understanding this argument that Israel is not a democracy because it is a place with 20%, you know, um, a 20% uh, Arab population, many of whom were just the people in 1948 that didn't participate in, you know, the, 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 the war to slaughter their Jewish neighbors, right? Well, just not, neither, neither did almost any of them live there and stayed in their that. homes. So, um, but I want to come back to a point you made yeah. a while ago that I was sure. not able to latch sure. on to, where you're like, well, there's no policy that, that we can do to dissuade Hamas. Yeah, I think this is really deeply untrue, because if you look at the way that, the, the, that Hamas has spent the aid that we've given them. And I urge people to go look at pre-war, what the standard of living was like in Gaza with the aid that we've sent there. It's actually comparable in many ways, like infant mortality, um, access to food, life expectancy to other countries in the region. I was shocked by this. I urge you to go mm -hmm. look it up. But, um, you know, the, the thing is, like, I believe that they have a $150 million dollar uh, military budget, and 40% of it has gone to building tunnels, which makes the targeted attacks you were talking about earlier so impossible. You look at the way that the international community funds the schools, and anyone out there can go look at TikToks of Palestinian children being radicalized and taught to hate the Jewish people next door, which of course propels the cycle of violence and rockets being sent into Israel. So there are all kinds of things we can do here. Like, I think, generally speaking, we have, it's important to remember Bush is the one that pushed for that election in 2005, where Hamas came to power. We bet on that. That was a really bad bet. And we're also the people that took out the buffer state between, you know, um, you know, we took out Iraq. So now um, Iran is basically unchecked in this entire region. And they are the ones funding uh, the Houthis, Hamas, and Hezbollah, uh, which are conducting all these strikes. So, you know, in many ways, it's our policy. There's so much that we could be doing to stabilize this area and put pressure on Hamas to actually stand up for the people. Yeah, so I think that you're miss... Okay, so there are two points here. One Please. is uh, what I said was that I think I don't think American citizens have any leverage to over... Hamas. In other words, Hamas is not being supported by the United States. It is an enemy yes, of the United it is. States. That, that makes you that makes you that makes it in a structurally different position than what American allies being supported by Israel by sorry being supported by the United States uh, are are doing right. You know that they have a that so the question of like why isn't the left right, which notably is not in power right, like why isn't the left doing something to hold Hamas accountable. I think that the uh, the like the purpose of a protest is to try to change government policy, right? That there isn't something that the that you could, you know, that you could protest that the United States is uh, is doing for Hamas. In fact, the United States, again, see above, is you know, providing, you know, weapons and diplomatic cover for uh atrocities at a totally blood curdling scale that are being committed in the name of getting rid of Hamas. But the other point I wanted to make is that when you say that, oh, you don't understand how I can say that Israel is not a democracy when uh, Israeli Arabs in, uh, in most ways uh, have, uh, have, uh, have equal rights. Um, uh, and I think that, but well, I gave you the reason for thinking it, right. And it wasn't about the Israeli Arabs, right. I don't think that the, uh, I don't think that anything that was true about the Israeli Arabs could, you know, negate the uh, the argument that I was making, which is that for the last 56 years, there has been all this territory that has been absorbed into Israel for every possible legal and practical purpose other than giving citizenship and voting rights to the Palestinians who live there, that they have a, that you have, you know, just uh, that you have people who are, Israeli settlers who live in the West Bank, and if you look at their rights and you look at the rights of everybody else who lives in the West Bank, I do think that the word apartheid is a fair description of that reality. And I do think that they have uh, that it's not really the case that you get to say, well, we're a democracy, and sure, we've spent 56 years ruling over people 
uh, who don't have citizenship or a right to vote in our elections. And it's currently our policy that we will always rule over them. Uh, that's our, our explicitly stated policy that we'll always rule over them. But we're a democracy because look at these other people who we, yeah. we did give citizenship to, you know, back, you know, uh, many decades ago. I, I, I don't think I don't think that defense actually touches what the argument is. I would also just point out with regard to. Um, well, can I ask a the, clarifying question? Because I literally it, don't it, understand what you're saying. Sure, you said. sure. But just, sure. just, just, okay, just, just like, you know, sure. just like while I'm thinking about it, right? Just the, that. Go, go ahead. With, with regard to immigration policies, you say, yeah, every country sets its own immigration policies. But as I think we would agree in the US context, right, that they, uh, that immigration policies can be extremely objectionable. Uh, and if, um, and if you have explicit racial or religious discrimination uh, in immigration policies, that's really bad. I think that's something we would agree in a U.S. context is mm -hmm. really bad. And so I think if you say anybody who comes from the right ethno-religious background anywhere in the world has a right to come here, but uh, we're going to prevent families of people who you know, in the vast majority of the cases, those 750,000 people uh, who were driven out in 1948, you know, vast majority of the cases, ordinary civilians, uh, they have, uh, as, you know, Israeli historians themselves have exhaustively documented, uh, that you know, people, you know, people who are either fled from atrocities, uh, you know, their villages being destroyed, et cetera, or who were, uh, who were, um, or who just did what civilians have every right to do in every sure. war, which sure. is to flee the war zone with the, with the with the understanding that, of course, they'll be allowed to go back to their homes when it's over. If you sure. don't let those people come home uh, for the very explicit reason, right? I have never met a Zionist who is shy about saying that this is the reason, right? That they have uh, that uh, for the very explicit reason that, no, 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 if we allow refugees to uh, to to come back, that would disrupt the demographic balance. You, you know, believe really? in right of return? Yeah, I think that the wow. I think that I think that yes, I think that the I think that right of return is something that follows okay. from from very <gasps> basic from very, from very basic yeah. liberal democratic principles that I strongly suspect you and I would completely concur on in any other context. Sure. Okay, so we don't have that much time left. Man, sure. there's so much here. I I almost want to go down this path though. I, I, it almost seems like you have a, a more right wing position than I do because I, like, I, I, in the sense that I like, are you telling me you consider Gaza to be part of Israel's like territory and that when they can't vote, like you want a mega, like you want a one state in this region, like administered by Israel? Is that correct? Well, administered by everybody who lives there, that they have a that uh, that everybody should have equal democratic rights, which is something that, uh, generally speaking, okay. people who people who uh, people who support the Israeli status quo say, "Oh, that would be awful. That would be the end of Israel as a as a Jewish state." They equate that to destroying Israel. So, look, this is what I, I think. don't think you would have found a lot of support in America to like uh, you, you know bring in Ida and then like sorry, sorry, sorry bring it bring in what. Bring right, Al Qaeda and make them like part of America. Like tensions are a little bit high right now, you know. Um, I, yeah, I, but, the, yes. but, the, but the ultimate reason that that's high, right? The ultimate reason why all the violence that's happened, that whole cycle of violence we were talking about earlier, you know, the ultimate reason for all of it is that you have this, um, you know, this fifty-six years of uh, people who are. Uh, living in the West Bank and Gaza under military occupation, who have um, and uh, you know who haven't done right. There are two things that you could do, right? If we just agree with the, if we agree on the absolute bedrock principle that no state has a right to rule in the long term over people mm -hmm. who don't have citizenship rights in that state, that that's just an absolutely not acceptable thing. That this is like I don't see how a democratic principle could get more basic than that. If you agree with that, right, then you have either to do a two-state partition tomorrow or you have to give everybody who currently lives under your rule citizenship rights. Those are your options. They have There is no third option uh, that's consistent with that principle. And especially 
uh, that if you say, well, you know, and again, I'm not attributing this to you. I'm just trying to, I'm just making a much more general point, right? If you say, well, uh, look, it would be great to have a two state solution, but we can't because of reasons X, Y, and Z that are all in the fault of different Palestinian leaders. Okay. If that's true, you got to give them citizenship because you cannot rule over people, right? Not for 56 years, not for one year, right? You cannot rule over people who do not have democratic rights in your country. Every human being has a right to self-government. And sure. if you were doing that, you're violating that right. Sure. I, I hear you. Um, I would like a chance to make a few points. Uh, yes, if please. I can do that. Yeah, um, because we don't have that much time left. And you know, Ben, I really, really want to talk about what's going on in Rafa. I think you and I probably sure. don't d agree on one state versus two state. I'd love to talk about it more. You have been watching free public content from Give Them an Argument. To access every single episode of the show, the main show on uh, Monday nights, all of the streams, all of the uh, debate breakdowns, all of the patron exclusive post games on Monday nights, all of the patron exclusive bonus episodes every week, and much, much more, go to patreon.com slash Ben Burgess. I cannot resist ending this with, don't be foolish. <laughs>